Hello everyone! Well, all of my videos are, for better or worse, unscripted. I did put in thought in how to structure this one, and I don't think I can structure it very directly, where I could be like, okay, here's the topic of the video, here's a bullet point list, here we go! Instead, I think it will have to be in a more of a story time format and it will have to be a tiny bit more rambly so i am very very sorry if you wanted to find out what the conclusion is from the topic of the video you'll kind of have to stick it out with it and actually have an attention span i know that that's asking for a lot and one of the unfortunate things about being from a minority faith is that i am already anticipating like hundred people that will just come in not to listen to the video but to just throw in the random preaching into the comment section. Oh well, what can you do? You just kind of have to live with it. Anyway, moving on. Um, the way that I'm gonna begin this video is to tell you that whenever you pick a religion, technically you're picking against all other religions. This tends to be not something that you think about when you're born into a religion, especially if you're born into a religion that expresses superiority of only our religion is right, or only our religion exists, or only our god is a real god. But when you're born into such a religion, you don't really expect to be justifying yourself towards other people. For example, well, why did you go with Christianity? Why aren't you worshipping Poseidon? These kind of questions do not tend to come up because it's almost like your religion is the default. Everyone around you only follows your religion. And when people run into other people that have done that thinking and that have switched faiths or have gone atheist, they tend to get a bit flabbergasted and the questions such as the title of my video, well, they come up. So to begin with, I have not found anything that I was searching for inside Christianity. It's technically the religion that I was born into, my family's Protestant, but nobody was overly preachy or overly attached to religion when I was growing up. It wasn't the family that attended church service. It wasn't the family that gathered and read from the Bible in the evenings. I had a Bible, I have read it fully, even in my school system, we had to read it for like our Lithuanian language class and analyze the whole text. We had either ethics or religion classes as well. You pick one. When I was a teenager, I went with ethics class, but Christianity is kind of inside the foundation of my country and it is at the same time a bit of an alien religion because technically it, it's not ours. It was kind of forced on us like 500 odd years ago. So my country is Christian and at the same time eh, eh, I don't know how many people would be like devout devout that would be like going to their parishes and their churches like weekly would be like actually doing confession more than once in their life when they needed their first communion or, you know, when they were getting married. I don't know how many people would be like reading their Bible every single day. Anyway, um, in my family, a personal relationship with God was stressed because once again, we were Protestant. Praying every single day was about the norm. So before going to sleep, you would pray to yourself more than, you know, out loud and in front of parents. Your conversation with God was supposed to be something that you keep personal and private. And the whole thing felt so empty to me. I could not relate to the book at all. I feel like a lot of things expressed in the Bible are frankly 
quite awful thoughts that really wouldn't fly in the 21st century. I did not feel any kind of connection with the Christian God at all. Um, my prayers were never answered. Worse, even worse, like I never felt connected to a religion. It's one thing if like prayer calms you down, if like it gives you a sense of peace, it gives you this intuitive feeling that this is the right thing to do or that everything's going to be all right. So it's not even like that I prayed for a bicycle and I never got a bicycle. And well, the problems in my early life were a bit more severe than that. I had my parents get divorced. I had severe health issues. I had to go through several surgeries. There was a lot of quite extreme shit. So it wasn't even that the small me was like praying for a bicycle. <laughs> and small me was praying for higher issues than that. But it's not even that your prayer doesn't get answered. It's the fact that you have no connection at all. Absolutely. There's nothing. Zero there. And a lack of any kind of connection at all has just outright turned me atheist. And I've spent atheist good 15 years of my life, and that was probably a great decision for the time. Because honestly, when you grow up in a religion that is... The society hammers you over the head that this is the right thing, this is the only thing, this is your only choice, don't you dare and go and wander about and like search for anything, there's always a lot of fear-mongering of if you don't belong to this religion, then you belong to the fiery pits of hell or whatever. Um, there is a lot of rights and wrongs that are pulled directly from like a very specific religious book and like a very specific one way of thinking. Even if your family is not so ultra-religious that you would have to, like, leave your family together with religion when you leave a religion, there tends to still be quite a bit of religious trauma to untangle. Things that other people prescribed upon you that did not describe you. And, did, and their morals are not your morals. You don't live your life the same way as these other people do, but society decides that that's the only right way to... It's a good thing that I went atheist, honestly, because I had 15 years to unravel all of that and to unravel my own relationship to religion, the kind of things that I'm sensitive about, the kind of things that I'm not sensitive about. I feel that if I just jumped to a different religion there and then, it would have done... It would have been an action that was kind of taken as... I am anti this religion, so I'm this religion instead. And nothing good comes out of decisions that are made in spite or in a rebellion. All sorts of like big life decisions, they tend to need to be thought out. So because my spirituality went from Christian to none, <laughs> I had 15 years to think about that. Um, so fast forward to me at like the age of 25, 26 thereabouts, um, my life has really gone downhill in a bad way. My health has started to collapse. I did not fit in to the societal expectations forced upon me. Like, it's kind of expectation in my family to be successful in a career. And when we're talking about career, we are talking about getting an education, getting a nine to five, doing everything that you can to like survive in that environment and then climb up the career ladder. We're talking about having a certain apartment, furnishing it in a certain style, having certain expectations, making certain parts of your life look very picturesque, even the way that you dress. There is an expectation about that. And Despite the fact that I was a very, very sickly child, I it was hammered into my head that I can't act upon it. 
that I have to always try and pretend that I'm healthy. Um, well, I got through university. I got my nine to five. I had to spend long periods doing significant overtime. It was very stressful. My health collapsed. I realized that that is not something that I can do. My mental health also went out the window. I did not fit the mold that was set upon me. And even though there was nobody to enforce the mold ever since I turned 18 because I moved countries, that mold was still somewhere in my psyche that I was still trying to enforce upon myself. So when everything in your life goes to shit and you don't think that there is all that much time remaining, you're like, you know what? Fuck it. Everything that I want to try in my life, let me just throw it at the wall and see what sticks. Part of it was spirituality. <laughs> that was one of the things that I threw at the wall and checked if it sticked. And, um... My husband is an atheist, but for me, it did stick. I, I tried a whole bunch of things that he would consider woo-woo. I tried numerology. I tried black mirror gazing. I tried divination, various forms of divination. I tried chaos magic. I tried all sorts of branches of occultism, maybe except for like very Western Christianity themed occultism, like um, ceremonial magic. That's not one of the things that I ever felt pulled for. And I, I went really searching. Like I tried Hecate, I tried various like different pagan gods like that. I tried demonotry and demonotry sticked. And over time, my practice kind of shrunk to focus more on its core elements. Effectively, what I did was I did a lot of searching of what is me, what isn't me, what fits me, what doesn't fit me. A lot of the divinations that I did, a lot of black mirror gazing that I did, a lot of my dreams, they kind of were pointing in a singular direction. But I couldn't recognize the direction until I was already in the direction and until I found it. So my first approach to demonolatry was from a book by Theodore Rose that requires you to call upon Lucifer before you call upon the rest of, you know, demons. It, 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 the book has hierarchy. Now, like five years later, I would tell you that you don't really need to follow something like that. But the fact that I followed it was probably a good thing because my practice kind of shrunk from like having a step one and two and three to just having a step one. And by the time I focused on step one, a lot of the signs and dreams and all that I was having kind of made sense. And by this point, I have used quite a few scary terms to people, such as like demons and demon worship. Demon is such a weird grab bag of things. Normally, it is either gods of other religions that we don't like, nature spirits, spirits that we kind of made come into existence through mistranslation, Spirits that, like, are influenced by astrology and planets. It is a lot of things that over time got dropped into, like, this one basket. And then the basket got its own, I don't know, fictional stories weaved around it in order to, like, tie it together with a bow tie. Technically, everything that is in the basket is not even from the same category. It's literally a pick-and-choose-its-own-basket. It literally depends of whether or not your spirit was villainized by some sort of big religion that doesn't like your spirit, or whether your religion had beef with another religion, in which case both religions threw both religion gods into the basket. Um, 
there's also platonism that kind of comes into play where demons are considered wise spirits, daimonis. Um, there are people that are practicing from that angle where also messenger spirits, a spirit that's like in between a person and a god, would also fall into the category of demon, technically. So there are a lot of ways to see the basket. As there are a lot of ways to see the basket. Let me say that the way that I see Lucifer practically excludes the conflation with Satan inside Christianity. I feel like I am in a good position and a bad position <laughs> at the same time. Because, um, because my god is conflated with Satan in Christianity, the name is a lot more prominent. Which also means that videos like these would get a lot more attention than why did I chose Azazel over God and Jesus, or why did I chose, I don't know, Aphrodite over God and Jesus. It's a, it's kind of a name that's ingrained into like people's psyche. But at the same time, to me, that name doesn't really represent Satan. I find that the only verse connecting the two is kind of mistranslation or rather a speech about a Babylonian king, which you compare to a bright morning star, which technically, yes, Lucifer is the correct term, but that doesn't make Christianity, Satan, Lucifer. But at the same time, if you want to be more confusing even, Christianity, Satan is not really a thing. There, are, Satan is a title. More than one person in the Bible carried the title of Satan simply because that was the opposer, the opposition. And the Satan of Satans, Samael, is an angel and it is actually entirely religion aligned. Therefore, uh, it gets to be a very, very, very confusing topic for what person considers what spirit to be what. But if I was to view Lucifer, it is honestly quite an elusive figure because it is now a name that's prominent because it was in a book that it doesn't belong in. Um, if you ask every single Luciferian, they will be subscribing to an entirely different set of beliefs and where those beliefs came from. If you ask me, I would say that it is a Roman minor deity that represents Venus in the morning, and light. And with light comes very nice associations, such as personal enlightenment, enlightenment of self, and I find that area to be more accurate than his knowledge and freedom aspect. But with enlightenment of self, understanding of self, what tends to happen is you kind of free yourself from any kind of very strict societal boxes, because it is very, very rare for people to fit into very, very strict societal boxes. And you do tend to find things that you're passionate about, which tends to then promote your production of the things that you're passionate about, which tends to kind of further knowledge. It's almost like we're naturally predisposed to liking things and then making things and then furthering the things that we like. Oh my. Um, if I would dig further into, like, the symbolism of Venus in the morning, you would arrive at things such as Eye of Horus, symbols that represent hope and peace and healing. And that tends to be a lot of how people that follow Lucifer, perceive the energy that they're connecting with. It's almost like throw that name from any direction and you will, despite the fiction, arrive at a very, very similar point. Therefore, which direction you entered it from kind of matters a lot less. You're kind of arriving at a very similar set of values outside of well, political groups that tend to just then try and define these set of values and then force onto everyone else. That's eh, not gonna work all that well, but you end up 
people in general agreeing that it is a healing presence. It is a hopeful presence. It is a peaceful presence. It is a presence that promotes self-exploration. It is a presence that promotes self-enlightenment. It is a presence that promotes effectively therapy. <laughs> it is a presence that then promotes gaining knowledge and freeing yourself from whatever way you perceive your life to be a prison. Because sometimes you can get stuck in circumstances that are less than ideal and you don't really want to, you know, stay in that. Let's say if you're in an abusive environment or a toxic environment or an environment that can't really accept you. But it is not really a strongly opposing force. A lot of people that do follow Lucifer can entirely assimilate into other spiritual groups completely fine. And some of them will be very warm and communal people. It's just that speaking about your personal beliefs and your religious beliefs when they fall into that side of things tends to be kind of taboo. So you won't really find people identifying as that, especially when the social image is of the devil or as this conspiracy theory that you're supposed to be some sort of reptilian that is now very rich and famous. Ugh, conspiracy theories, nothing is better. And it is also why it is so hard to make a video like this, because I have to immediately preempt the kind of things that people will think about me and will say about me without even listening to it. Like, somebody will stand up and go, I don't like the way that you look. If you were following God, you would be prettier. Or, I can see the lack of soul in your eyes. Like, people will say outright insulting and hurtful shit to your face for following a different religion than them. Just because their religion is the default rather than yours. But at the same time, I'm kind of glad that my religion isn't the default because honestly, if it was, you just know that a large amount of people are always bound to cause shit. And the same kind of dogma of you must follow my God above all gods would probably happen no matter which religion comes out at the top. It's just, it really sucks when it is directed against you in particular. And it is, once again, it's not something that I would put on a census. If you asked me at the census, I would probably identify myself as atheist or spiritual or any kind of other label that I can apply that would not stand up socially, but at the same time wouldn't be an entirely misrepresentation of myself. I wouldn't identify myself as a Christian, for example. I, I feel like that would be dishonest. I find that identifying yourself as an atheist is neutral and nobody will ask questions about it. Um, spiritual would be true. I could probably be like pagan if I wanted to super stand out because technically I am. Um, pagan community would shun anyone that can be seen to be in the basket of demons simply because they have their own problems and Satanic panic is a thing, and nobody really, really wants to be threatened at gunpoint or have crosses burnt in their backyard or any other kind of shit that people do. So, you know, you just kind of sort the people that might cause problems due to the perception of society and be like, we're not this basket, we are this basket. This basket is a separate thing. And then when your religion falls into that basket, you're like, well, we're this basket, like we can't, we can't do anything about it. And maybe that is a good thing because you get to meet awesome people. You get to meet people that have really truly been through the meat grinder, people that will never be open about their faith outside of very, very, very trusted people. Um, people that can't really openly create groups, people that will be a lot more guarded about their beliefs and their religion there is a, some sort of a camaraderie in that. And because of just how colorful that last basket becomes, 
it kind of becomes this free area of exchange of like cultures and beliefs and it just becomes a very inclusive basket so you have paganism that's already a basket that's too big because effectively everything that's not christianity falls there but then if your god is a bit too taboo you then have the demonolatry basket and your god just kind of falls into it and so you do too and then you get to super scare people with simply existing um if people ever know of your faith they will try praying against you. They will try and tell you that there's something wrong with you. They will try to threaten you. <laughs> they will try to tell you about the awful things that they believe will happen to you because you're not following the one true religion and you kind of become that sponge that soaks up all of that <laughs> negativity from like that big group of people while the basket of paganism becomes a little bit more free. Like, these people kind of get to assimilate into society and, you know, live and be more open about their beliefs. And, of course, that also ranges because some cultures are very, very, very um, not accepting when it comes to any kind of faith outside of the main faith of the country that you're in. So I can't really say that that basket has a good time, but that basket gets to still throw in festivals and go to meets and greets. And that basket still feels a bit freer to like meet in groups and create tiny communities. Well, the last basket, they kinda, they kinda can't. So the internet is a blessing <laughs> in that regard. And it is literally just normal people with their own religious practices. But I kinda went down the rabbit hole of trying to explain myself a bit too much by this point. I honestly have to say that until I found the religious path that was correct to me, I can't really say that I felt as much peace as I do now. I can't really say that I coped with life as well as I do now. Um, that is not to say that there was just like a giant gift that dropped from the sky that suddenly made my life perfect. I still have health issues. They're still progressing because I was born with them and it is a genetic condition and you can't really expect anything else. Um, I still have financial issues. But that connection that you hear a lot of Christians go, you know, oh, I feel like I can just say, Jesus, take the wheel, or I feel a lot calmer after praying, or I feel... Pe I understand that. I understand that feeling of peace. I understand that having your spirituality be like a bit of your safety net and be the thing that focuses you and calms you down and gets you to think up solutions and gets you through life. I understand that, and yet, if I tried and have a conversation with a person that comes from a mainstream religion, and if I ever disclose my religion, we can't really bond over similarities. I will get a lot of get away thy foul demon. So um, you just don't. You don't disclose these kind of things. You keep them private, and you keep your practice private. Honestly, one thing that I was going to that I would like people to take away from this video is do not be afraid to do religious searching, especially if you feel like the box that you were born into doesn't quite fit you. Um, don't just like go Christianity to Satanism pipeline because a lot of people that end up there do end up there because they are anti-Christian rather than because they do like Satan. Um, so it is a bit of a reactionary reaction. I suppose people that actually stay there, stay there for different reasons, but a lot of the influx will always be religious trauma of the religion that they're leaving more than the religion that they're going to. So like, take some time off from spirituality entirely, go atheist, that's fine. Um, but do some religious searching. Don't just go, well, I am born into this religion. This religion says that it is right. 
um, my parents say that this religion is right. The people around me say that this religion is right. Therefore, I must be bad for not fitting in the box. Um, I find that there's a lot of mental issues that come from that environment, that then come from that, like, thought process. So, no, you know, go and do your own spiritual searching. Because, honestly, if you can find what fits you, what you float with the best, no matter what god it is, whether it's an angel or a demon or whether it's a god or whether it's even a Christian god, but like with your own homemade spirituality rather than by what your parish priest says. When you find the way that religion can fit you and the way that your spirituality can fit you and what spirituality does fit you, a lot more things kind of fall into place. It does become a sort of a safety net and it does become this relaxing atmosphere that you can think over things and learn a lot and learn to be a lot more at peace with yourself and your environment and the kind of life that you're living. Um, spirituality won't really be the solution to your problems necessarily. I find that when people start looking at spirituality because of something is very, very wrong in their life and they feel like if they try and make a deal, if they pray to this like specific God, they will fix the life issue that they have. And, you know, some people do arrive at spirituality that way, but don't really see it as this one major sacrifice that you're making in order to like reach this one very very specific goal because that is not what it is it is more something that ends up fitting into your life as a way of life something that ends up being a part of you like your environment is a part of you but do go out and don't be afraid to do that searching and because a lot of demon worshippers and pagans have a similar mentality. It is also the faiths that aren't really growing because nobody's like trying to hold their children at gunpoint and tell them that this is what they have to believe. And you know what? Maybe it's a good thing. Maybe it is a good thing that there is a lot of faiths that are small and once again they don't take the majority seat. And maybe Maybe in the perfect, like, world, the rational basis or basic spirituality where people just identify as either spiritual, agnostic, or atheist, and that is the majority of the population, maybe that is ideal, because at that point, if anyone does arrive at spirituality, they have arrived there at their own free will. They have arrived there after doing a lot of searching and deciding that this is their correct direction. Instead of being coerced to go there because of somebody that tried to instill a fear upon them, somebody that tried to drop their opinion upon them, somebody that tried to tell them that this is the wrong, the right way to live and that there is the right way to live and the wrong way to live. And of course, militant atheists are also a thing. There are quite a lot of rational families that would not accept children that fall outside of the view of rationality and do land into spirituality. So, you know, hopefully that as time progresses, that also kind of solves itself out and a lot more people will be a lot more accepting and inclusive and will think their thoughts and actions through. But, you know, that is... Life is life and people is people. What can you do? I do not envy the position that people that are rational and cognizant of these kind of behaviors um, but are part of like a major religion that they occupy because you're like, well, this is the right spirituality for me, but a lot of people that follow the same spirituality as I do are very much asshole in their behavior. Like that, that must feel really, really really not very good. But anyways, this has become quite the rant. 
I hope I made myself clear. And just so you know, I'm not looking for anyone else's religion. If you want to ask questions, go ahead. If you just want to preach, well, thank you for engagement. But I will never return to the quote-unquote right path. No, I don't believe the flames of hellfire, therefore I am also not scared of them. Yes, I do believe in a beautiful afterlife for myself, thank you for asking. No, I don't need to subscribe to your religion to believe in a beautiful afterlife for myself, thank you for asking. If I had any kind of wishes, it would be that it would be more acceptable to follow spiritualities that aren't in the traditional majority. That would be a lot nicer, like, if everyone felt a lot safer to just be of whatever spirituality that they want to be, a world would be a nicer place. But um, other than that, no regrets, honestly. And no, I did not get a mansion and a beautiful car and like a whole bunch of men. No, I'm not hypersexual. No, I am not trying to, I don't know, seduce your children to the dark side with cookies. Yes, I do like the way that I myself look and I do like my style. That is besides the point. That has absolutely nothing to do with my spirituality or religion. This is not like some sort of dress code that I am required to wear. This is just like what I like wearing. I hope that that answers like the majority of the questions that people have because that's the kind of quite that's kind of like responses that I tend to get. Like a lot of people that imagine that I have sold my soul to the devil and that I am now a, I don't know, famous record artist living in my mansion and will surely regret my decisions and whatever's the normal amount of time to live after you make such a deal in like 10 years, I will just drop dead and then the devil will come to take my soul away into the fiery pits of hell and then I will be like, oh no, why did I not accept Jesus Christ? That is not part of my spirituality. That could be part of your spirituality. But honestly, I just, I find that kind of behavior to be very unhealthy. And you do look like a clown when you come along and try to preach these kind of thoughts to other people. I am happy where I ended up. It is quite a funny coinkydink that my god's name just so happens to be conflated with some other religion's um, anti-hero that is also a lot of different people because, well, once again, Satan is really a title, not, not a specific entity. And it can be seen as an entity, but it's still kind of a title in that religion. It's not really a one thing. It is more like multiple things. So... I suppose that the same, it's a good thing and a bad thing. Like, I, I get publicity. <laughs> there are a lot more people looking for Lucifer than they would for something like Loki or Emir or a thousand other mythological beings. Um, on the other hand, I also don't get to be as public about my own faith as some other pagans do, because it will never be understood. Because once again, there's also a lot of bad associations that come from it. Um, if, if you want to know how to avoid that, just find another name that your god goes by. Such as, for example, Roman Lucifer is the same as Greek Phosphorus. So I can also say Phosphorus. Or I can give a personal association where there is one... Um, historian slash archaeologist that was arguing that Eye of Horus did not stand for the moon, but that stood for Venus in the morning. So I could also identify my god as Eye of Horus if I wanted. I can also say that I'm worshipping a planet in at a specific time. So I'm, I'm specifically worshipping Venus in the morning, which would make people look at you like you're a bit kooky, but... It definitely comes with a lot of less religious dogma and accusations from other people around you. So it ends up being like a nicer thing that you can use. Um, there are a lot more than like one demon that technically has more than one name. So this is the kind of escape that would fit many a demon author. But people don't tend to like 
honestly take themselves out of the last basket when society throws them into it. Because when you need to change your god's name just to, like, fit into the pagan basket, you're like, when you don't want me there to that extreme, maybe it's best that I just am not there and I'm in this other basket with this other group of people that seem to be accepting and <laughs> that came to their own religious realizations by themselves and that are not really technically a group, but also kind of a group. Like, there isn't any dogmatic standards to adhere to, but there are still public forums that you can talk on. <laughs> So, as spirituality is at the same time your own, as at the same time you get to hear about other people's experiences, which makes it quite a nice place, honestly. So, I don't really regret landing here, um, even if it would be easier in real life if I was in a more accepting basket. So, I hope I answered your question of why am I a Luciferian and why am I not following THE God or um, Jesus? And hopefully you're not gonna preach at me. If you have any kind of questions, once again, comment section is open. Feel free to ask anything. I'll try to answer the best that I can. If a question ends up being repeated enough or ends up being interested enough, I might make a video about it. But this is it for the occult videos that I wanted to make in a short amount of span. Normally, like, every couple of months, I will get, like, ideas for occult videos that kind of just pop up. And then I will find videos that are kind of similar in theme that I also can make. So every couple of months, I'm like, oh, I have, like, three or four titles of videos that I really want to make. And then I, like, sit down and make them. And um, then I go back to gaming for a bit. And then once again, like specific topics pop up. I'm like, hey, this would be an interesting thing to talk about. I sit down and make it. It's, it's the kind of the the kind of cycle that this channel goes on. I am just saying that now I'm at the end of what I wanted to currently make occult wise. But that doesn't mean that those topics won't build up and like that I won't be here a couple months later going, yeah, these are the topics that I actually want to disclose um, and discuss. If you are here for the first time and you're still watching at this point, thank you for giving me your attention with these kind of more clickbaity titles. It wasn't really clickbait, but I know that it is a hotter topic, which means that a lot of people that are not of the same faith as me will end up clicking into this video. I expect a lot more outside people and a lot more preaching and a lot of people that are not part of the circles that I run in and that have their own like weird misconceptions about the circles that I run in. So if you're one of those people and you're like still here after 40 four minutes <laughs> around there. Um, thank you. Thank you for actually listening to me speak. It was a pleasure to have you here. There are really no bad feelings. I don't really hate any faith. Once again, I had a lot of time to deconstruct the faith that I was technically born into. I had that nice big break from any kind of spirituality that was really needed and was very, very helpful when it came to my own spiritual development. I wish that we could all bond over more similarities rather than the differences that we have and the differences that really, really make people try and convert one another. I, I find that to be kind of dickish behavior, but you know, when when a lot of religion hinges on we are the best or we're the religion or you should threaten people to join us or else bad things will happen to them, that is kind of where you're gonna end up. And honestly, no matter which religion, once again, no matter which religion takes the majority point, these kind of attitudes would probably be born from it. 
So the lack of these kind of attitudes probably is because the spirituality that I accept is smaller and less seen. If it was a big thing, if it had several million followers, I guarantee you there would be big prominent groups that would lay out very specific rule sets that people have to follow in order to fit into the spirituality. And that already happens with some authors and like little cults of like a hundred or two hundred people. But um eventually one of these would become like the big group, and then it would kind of consume the rest by going, well, this is the way to subscribe to this spirituality and no other path is acceptable. It's kind of what happens with people. So I can't really say that my religion is better in that regard. I can only say that it is better because there isn't a giant organized group at the moment because it isn't popular and it isn't the majority. Once again, being the majority and it's its, its own shit fest, then we would probably be the best off if there wasn't a majority at all and there wasn't the majority to like influence political decisions and influence like uh, decisions when it comes to your body and to medical procedures and things like that and everybody just like decided their own spirituality in private and kept it to smaller more private groups that are not really present and don't really like run whole institutions or countries Oh, that's that's when the problems start. So, this wasn't really an advertisement. I just took a topic and I talked about it. I hope that you enjoyed. And if you want to stick around, I will be finishing Daggerfall soon. And we will be playing other retro games. Because that's what we do on this channel. And from time to time, Myrta just has a good occult ramble. So um, subscribing to my channel is like subscribing to your insane cat lady auntie that um, talks really weird shit but also plays video games because that's just what we do over here. Thank you for paying attention and hopefully I'm gonna see you the next time. And if you really like this video or find that anyone else can benefit off this ramble, Feel free to share it around, like, especially in communities that wouldn't, like, normally expect to see that kind of video because, hey, I get to reach out of my own bubble and engage other people and that is always fun and nice and great. And like the video, comment, the algorithm really likes that, which is, once again, the, at the very least, the people come in preach and tell me that I am a foul demon, that I have soulless eyes, or that I look ugly because I am not a child of God, uh, at the very least they are engaging the algorithm and like propelling my videos forward, so really thank you for that. And I hope I'm gonna get to see you the next time. See ya!